it's your turn. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the session, uh, which have accepted uh, my contribution. And we can start. The prehistoric settlement on Kukonisi, an elliptical low islet located in the innermost part of Mudros Bay on Limnos, was excavated under the direction of Christos Bilotis and the auspices of the Academy of Athens from 1994 to 2016 with intermissions. The excavations uh, brought to light the remains of a densely occupied a Bronze Age settlement in the north part of the islet, whose material culture shows, uh, shows uh, strong links to the North East Aegean and the West Anatolian regions. The southward orientation of the bay would have ensured a safe anchorage for ships heading towards the Northern Aegean, Macedonia, Thrace, Troy or the Dardanelles, providing, uh, along with harbour facilities, uh, replenishment of vitals and water supplies. The privileged geographical location of Kukonisi is surely one of the decisive uh, reasons uh, for its longevity as a major emporium for almost two millennia. Having followed closely the developments of the two other major settlements in the early Bronze Age Limnos, in the Polyochni and Myrina, Kukonisi continued to flourish in the Middle Bronze Age and early Late, late Bronze Age, Age as the most important settlement of the island, providing an undisturbed uh, sequence for, uh, from the early Bronze Age uh, to the early Late Bronze Age. Finds of the early Mycenaean period uh, were also identified, but uh, were far less abundant, while the next substantial phase of occupation corresponds to the developed Late Bronze Age, namely the Late Atlantic 3-2A and Late Atlantic 3-B periods. The presence of Mycenaean pottery, as well as other typical Mycenaean objects, such as figurines of canonical phi and psi types, is clear indicator of a direct connection between Kukonisi and the Greek mainland during the 14th and the 13th centuries. This period, however, was not the first time of Kukonisi's contact to people from the South Aegean. Minoan or Minoanizing pottery and other small finds, among which textile tools discovered in fair quantities in the settlement, indicate contacts with Crete and the South Aegean as early as the late Middle Bronze Age. Apart from approximately 130 spinning walls of various shapes and sizes, which are found in almost every strata of the excavation, more interesting appear to be circa 40 loom weights so far brought to light. These artifacts, which constitute the focal point of this paper, begin to appear in the settlement in the advanced or the close of Middle Bronze Age. Falling within the context of household activities in the early Late Bronze Age settlement, the loom weights are concentrated in a specific area Trench 7 and particularly in trenches 8 and 9 of uh, the settlement, where Minoan and Minoanizing elements are prominent. In their vast majority, they are discoid in shape, uh, with one and rarely two suspension, suspension holes, as well as a peripheral, uh, peripheral groove on the top. One of them features an impressed finger mark uh, beneath a suspension hole, closely comparable with a specimen from Agia Irini 5. Similar in shape with the clay loom weights is a stone one, which was found uh, in 1996 in the plowing surface. All of them belong to the prominent South Aegean and particularly the Cretan-style discoid loom weights, 
which are considered, along with conical caps, as one of the hallmarks of Minoan influence throughout the Aegean at the time. In the northern Aegean, apart from Kukonisi, discoid loom weights have also been found at Microvunion Samothrace and at Troy. Uh, it is noteworthy that from the 19 loom weights in total brought to light in contemporary Troy 6, which dates from uh, 1780 to 1750 to circa uh, uh, 1300 uh, BC, nine of them belong to the discoid type. I, you can see there the amount uh, of loom weights from Troy and especially the discoid ones. In this framework, we would we would, we would easily apply Cutler's suggestion for the southern to the northern Aegean, claiming that in the majority of cases, the appearance of Cretan-style loom weights appears to represent the adaption of the work-weighted loom itself. The fact that elements of minor material culture, among which the discoid loom weights, are concentrated in specific areas on Kukonisi, led the excavator to the conclusion that a Minoan population dwelt in a separate quarter of the settlement. This possibility suggests a degree of mobility within the Aegean during the Bronze Age and indicates one way in which Cretan weaving technology may have been transmitted. While complete sets of loom weights may have accompanied weavers, it is also possible that lower numbers were carried to act as templates for making further weights. Since loom weights are not objects that are likely to have any perceived intrinsic value, it is probable that the non-local weights travel, traveled with their users rather than representing imports. Nevertheless, that does not seem to be applied to the related finds from Kukonisi. A preliminary macroscopic examination of the loom weights indicates that they were probably made of local clay. In any case, though, a petrographic analysis of the material will be more accurate. Although the functional identification of finds as loom weights is highly controversial, controversial, see for example the so-called net singers, it has symbol clay objects with a perforation, the so-called torus weights, the spool-shaped waves or the crescent-shaped weights, and of course a thorough study of the related material from Gukonisi is imminent, we can, on the present evidence, uh, correlate the appearance of discoid loom weights with the adoption of the work weighted loom in the settlement in the advanced or uh, the close of Middle Bronze Age. Taking into consideration the assumption that where discoid loom weights represent the first appearance of loom weights at the settlement, it is likely that a different method of waving was practiced prior to the adoption of the work weighted loom, I cannot avoid wondering what was the predecessor of the work weighted loom on Kukonisi, or what was the waving technology practiced earlier? <clears throat> Apart from the work weighted loom, which was used uh, in Crete from the Neolithic onwards, during the Bronze Age, there is evidence for the use of two other types of loom in the Eastern Mediterranean region the horizontal ground loom and the vertical loom with two beams. The oldest loom type among them is considered to be the horizontal ground loom. There are different types of horizontal ground loom which operate in slightly different ways. For the Bronze Age Eastern Mediterranean, information of how this loom functioned comes principally from Egypt. Iconographic representations and models show the work threads stretched over two beams that have been fastened with four corner pegs. 
In general, two weavers are depicted, sitting on either side of the loom, changing the set, entering and beating the weft. The heddle rod is supported with heddle jacks. The available evidence indicates that this loom type was mainly used for weaving tabby and basket wave waves. On the other hand, the vertical loom with two beams stands upright like the work weighted loom, although it had been suggested that it originated in Syria or Mesopotamia, the earliest representation occurs in Egypt during the last part of the second millennium BC, and it could have been developed in connection with the introduction of wool. Wool is quite easy to dye, and this could have inspired tapestry waving, for which the two-beam loom is considered to be the most convenient type. Nevertheless, tabby and twill fabrics can also be produced on this loom. The length of the warp is limited to the size of the loom, since the warp threads are stretched by beams attached to the loom. Unlike the warp-weighted loom, on the vertical loom with the two beams, uh, the weft is packed from the bottom and up. Uh, the wave twill, uh, so, sorry, the warp threads are placed side by side and not in layers. It is of course possible to also wave twill by using an more head rods in this case. However, the preserved depictions of this type of loom show only one head rod. All the above above mentioned loom types have advantages and disadvantages. I should also, uh, uh, be, uh, I should also note that the studies on loom types in Egypt demonstrate that in the same period and society, different looms can be used for producing different types of textiles. In every case, it depends on how someone can get the best yield and the most desired, uh, desired result. It is clear that the Bronze Age textile uh, craftspeople had knowledge of other techniques as well, such as making different types of bands using different braiding techniques and probably many other textile production techniques that are not evident from the archaeological record which is partly due to the fact that these techniques either do not require, require any tools at all, or the tools are made of perishable material. The introduction of the warp weighted or vertical loom on Kukonisi reflects probably an increased specialization in the textile industry, an innovation which becomes more striking when evidence from earlier habita habitation levels is considered. Since so far there are no preserved textiles from the settlement, and given the fact that the looms themselves were made of perishable material and there are therefore rarely preserved, the possibility that other waving techniques were also being practiced cannot be ruled out. The few fragments of Bronze Age textiles recovered in the Aegean to today are tabby waves, also known as plain waves. However, uh, since the existing sample of preserved textiles is so small, the loom weights recovered from sites across the Aegean can provide significant insight into the range of fabrics that could have been made with them. To conclude, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. To conclude, the presence of loom weights in the Bronze Age Selman Konisi Islet indicates the use of the warp weighted loom, an upright type of loom on which weights are used to apply tension to the vertical ha uh, hanging warp threads, from the advanced or the close of the Middle Bronze Age. The most probable a uh, predecessor of the warp weighted loom in the settlement that would have been the horizontal ground loom, given the longevity of this type of this loom type in the Bronze Age Eastern Mediterranean, although the possibility that other waving techniques were also uh, being practiced cannot be uh, ruled out. In any case, only the systematic study of the corpus of the textile uh, tools uh, on Kukonisi, which is imminent, 
will shed light on the same operatoire of textile production in this Bronze Age settlement. The last one. <laughs> okay. <laughs>